Hello, and welcome to the SAP Automation Channel. In this video, I'd like to talk about the Siemens Simatic S5 115U PLC with a 945 CPU. Now, the S5 115U, as can be seen here, is classed by Siemens as a mid-range controller in their S5 PLC family. I think the 945 CPU allows the 115U to touch the shirt tails, shall we say, of the top end, as it was the most powerful CPU which could be fitted to the 115U. The 115U um, is a modular type PLC, which means it is made up of individual modules, as can be seen here. The first thing to note is there is a backplane, which is this thing here, it runs along the back onto here. Um, onto this, cards, like these, or modules, uh, can be seated. Siemens offered a variety of backplanes to suit a wide range of applications. This particular backplane is a CR3 and can accommodate up to seven 115U type cards, which are these things here. The first card we come to is the power supply. This particular power supply can take an input voltage of either 115 or 240 volts AC. Uh, there is a voltage selector just underneath this little cover here. Um, on the front to choose either 115 or 240 volts, so obviously if you fit in a new one, then this switch must be in the correct position for the operating voltage. The power supply also holds the backup batteries that can be found just under this cover here. There's the backup batteries there. These batteries are responsible for maintaining the program in the CPU in the event of a power failure. They are especially important if there is no storage card fitted like in this instance here. It is good practice to replace these batteries before they go flat. If they do go flat, then this is indicated by two little indicators, so two little yellow LEDs come on here to show that the batteries have actually gone flat. Um, so obviously if these LEDs are illuminated, um, then replace the batteries. Uh, once fresh batteries have been installed, the reset, the reset switch will need to be operated um, on here, so basically just reset like that. The next card, um, this one here, uh, is the brains of the operation, the 945 CPU. This is where the user program is stored and executed. There's also a logic in here to take in signals from the input boards, like this one here, um, process them and send the signals back out to output boards, like this here. Um, this is done via the S5 bus on the back plane. You will notice on the front of the CPU that there are two ports. The first port, which is this one here, is where a programmer can connect to. With the programmer connected, you can monitor and enforce variables, download or upload programs, and make online changes, etc. Alternatively, an operator panel could be connected here for monitoring the process or setting process variables, etc. The port can also be used to connect the PLC to an L1 network. Unlike the 944, as shown here, as you can see, with two fixed ports, and the 943 CPU, the second slot, which is this one here, is designed to take an interface module. The interface module could be another programming port, like in this case, or it could be an RS-232 port, RS-485 port, or a Synec L1 network port. As I mentioned before, the backplane is a CR3. The CR3 could also accommodate cards from the compact range of PLCs, as can be seen here. These cards were classed as intelligent I.O. as they had onboard processors and could talk to the CPU via the S5 bus on the backplane. The cards had what they call a dual port RAM on board, which allowed communication to take place between the CPU and the card itself. The first card you can see here, this one here, is a CP525 card, which is a serial communications card. The next card is a very old graphics card called a WF470 card. I may do some videos on these individual cards to show how to parameterize them, etc. Next we have some standard signal modules where the outside world can connect to the PLC. This one is a 24 volt 32 bit digital input card. So for example, 32 switches, push buttons, photo cells, etc. can be connected here. The state of the sensors are visualized by these LEDs on the front. So if the card is receiving 24 volts DC, then the LED will illuminate. The next one, this one here, is a 24 volt 16-bit digital output card. In this case, the outputs are relays. 
Here, 16 lamps, sounders, etc. can be connected. Uh, just like the input card, the outputs are visualised by the LEDs on the front again. And finally, uh, we have an 8-channel analog input card. The card can receive either voltage or current, but also 8 PT100 sensors could be fitted. Next we have another compact card, this particular card here. Uh, this is an IM308C card, which allows the 115U PLC to be connected to a Profibus network. Uh, and finally, on the end here, uh, we have an IM306 card. This allows the PLC to be expanded and have expansion racks connected to it for a multi-tier installation. As this is just an overview video of the 115U PLC, I haven't gone into too much detail about the individual cards or indeed any of the S5 programming. Uh, the main reason for this video is to show you how the 945 CPU reacts after power failure and having flat batteries in the power supply. So, let me start by powering up the PLC. It is important to note the state of the LEDs when the power is restored. Uh, this particular type of power supply uh, should have three green LEDs illuminated. Uh, this shows that the 24 volts DC, 5.2 volts DC and 5 volt DC uh, are all present and correct. Uh, the other thing to notice are the two yellow uh, LEDs illuminated. Uh, this is indicating that the batteries are flat and even if I try to reset the error uh, you can see the LEDs come straight back on because the batteries are actually indeed flat. Uh, interestingly while the battery edit exists uh, the CPU runs OB34 so some code could be placed in here uh, to deal with this type of exception. As the batteries are flat and the power has been removed and I don't have a backup module installed it's no surprise that the program has been lost. I can imagine that opening a control panel door and seeing the CPU in this state could actually be quite alarming. Uh, but if you have an up-to-date backup of the program and programming you should have this backup and running in no time at all. As can be seen the stoplight is flashing quickly the stop light there, and the bus light is on constantly. Uh, this indicates uh, that the CPU needs to have an overall reset carried out. Uh, the bus light uh, means that the outputs have been disabled. To perform an overall reset, uh, the first thing I'll do is make note of where the retentive switch is. So whether it's in the RE position, which is retentive, or the NR position, which is non-retentive. So make a note of this, as this is quite important. So, the first thing I'll do is put the mode switch into the stop position, move the retentive switch down to overall reset, then toggle the mode switch to run, stop, run, stop. You may notice that the stoplight has actually stopped flashing, and then into run. At this point here with the green run lamp on and the no other error LEDs on, uh, the program can now actually be loaded back into the PLC. I've now just loaded the program back into the PLC and as you can see the outputs are toggling away. So that comes to the end of my video. So as shown here it is important to keep the batteries refreshed and also have an up-to-date backup of the program. Hope you've enjoyed this video and please remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.